Hello and welcome to Talk TV with Tiffany and when I'm not watching TV I'm talking about it and today I'm talking about the first four episodes of Timeless Season 2. Now I just finished a live stream with some of you lovely clock boxers. Cheers! Um, the martini may be taking a wee bit of an effect on me but you know like I said in my tweets the more I drink the more I love Timeless. So this is still counts as a very credible review and I will keep it spoiler free but I'll still try to answer some of your burning questions which I've been getting today. So what I want to start with is that Eric Kripke and Sean Ryan clearly had a vision in mind when they finished the first season and you can really see that in the path that the second season takes. So instead of following Flynn around like they did throughout the first season, now, just like Emma was in season one, they're finding and seeking out Rittenhouse's sleeper cell agents. So just like Emma was stuck in the Wild West with Jesse James for 10 years, we'll find a bunch of different kind of, maybe some of them prominent figures, maybe some of them not, you know, we're not sure exactly who they'll come across, but there are these agents who've been spending years in the past working their way up. And they're all Rittenhouse royal, maybe not royalty, but they're all diehard Rittenhouse families who are, you know, sending their kids off to do Rittenhouse's bidding for them in the future, uh, in the past. <laughs> so get ready to wrap your brain around the whole future past conundrum because there is a lot of little looping around that goes on which also makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun. So we'll be seeing that um, all Rittenhouse agents aren't alike. Now Emma is a die-hard believer. She will do anything for Rittenhouse. There's, it's black and white for her. So there's no middle ground. She'll do what needs to be done for the cause. And she is scary. Ooh, Annie Worshing is doing a great job because she's so sweet and fun and bubbly on Twitter and Instagram, but she gives me the chills on screen as Emma. So she is a baddie. And in the premiere episode, when uh, Carol and Emma have taken Lucy and taken her back to the war, to end all wars, World War I, we kind of see a really cool dynamic between Lucy and her mom that we haven't seen before. Now, in Lucy's mind, all the papers say that Mason Industries and everyone in it blew up. Uh, Connor Mason is now a laughing stock, which he's lost all reputation. And um, it, he, uh, he assumes fault for what happened. So, uh, like you also saw in all the promos and stuff, um, the time team is now in a secluded bunker and Agent Christopher is keeping close tabs on them, wants to keep them safe, doesn't want anyone to go out, doesn't want anyone to come in, and they have to protect this mission. So so that's where they stand. Meanwhile, Lucy thinks that all her friends have died and she is afraid that she might be the only person left to stop Rittenhouse. And throughout all of this, you see Carol wanting her daughter to just join the family business. And it's really heartbreaking because they both do have this shared love of history. They just have different views on, you know, preserving it versus changing it. So, um, so the s wounded soldier that they go to retrieve in the past and bring back to the present is going to become their new Rittenhouse um, leader. So this guy is also bad news. He has written... Um, the only thing I could sort of compare him to is like all the Hitler style dictators. He has a vision. He's written this grand um, piece that everyone is following and they're following his bizarre desires and they want to basically change the world by changing history so that it suits their vision and suits what they think is best for this world. So that's basically Rittenhouse's agenda, which we sort of got the feel for. We just never thought that the guy behind all of it would end up coming to the present time. So, um, so that's what they're up against this season. So it is the ultimate Rittenhouse big bad that the time team has to take down. 
So instead of chasing Flynn through all these historical little stops, now they have to go and track down uh, all these uh, agents, which makes it a lot more interesting because you get to meet all these different people. You get to see if, you know, not all Rittenhouse agents are the same. Maybe all of them, you know, don't want to change history, destroy the world. Uh, maybe they don't see everybody as pawns or maybe they do and they're happy to die for their cause. Each, each case will be something different. And meanwhile, we get to meet really cool historical figures. Maybe those historical figures will end up being Rittenhouse Asians like they've been in the past, or maybe not. Maybe they're just, you know, regular people who got sucked into something because they're, they come from a Rittenhouse family. So we'll see that. Um, Emma stays the Rittenhouse cause. You see Carol, because she loves Lucy so much, struggling with you know, following the Rittenhouse leader and being true to Rittenhouse and also protecting her daughter. So there is that interesting tension there. And now what you all have been waiting for, there are some amazing Wyatt and Lucy moments. You guys are going to just die. Steam is coming off the screen, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. So that tension build up through season one just intensifies in the first couple episodes and as you can tell from all the promos and the you know teaser kiss in the trailer it comes into fruition in the third episode so you don't have to wait too long to see Lucy and Wyatt finally act on their feelings so what happens after the kiss is the big mystery and you guys will have to tune in to find out but it is really rewarding to see them coming together. And then on the other hand, in episode four, I know there's some of you out there who really want to see Flynn and Lucy get it on. I'm not saying they're gonna get it on. I'm sorry, that's just, you know, not in the cars right now. But there's some really, really sweet moments there. And just to satisfy your uh, wish-fulfilling desires, I'll let you know that maybe just maybe they go undercover as husband and wife so that might be as close as a flucy action as you get within the first four episodes but i say it's a good start you know for those of you who are shipping them over wyatt and lucy uh it makes for some <laughs> really fun and interesting times as well and um i'll admit we don't see as much of flynn as we hope in maybe the first couple episodes he uh has a little bit more screen time in the third episode and a lot more screen time in the fourth. But um, at least we know that Goran Vishnik is now on Twitter and will be live tweeting with us. So that's a definite perk. And let me see. Some of the other questions you guys were asking were um, where Agent Christopher and Connor Mason stand. Like I said before, you see Connor Mason. He's at his rock bottom. Um, he lost his company, his building, his employees, his world fell apart. So he's lucky to basically have the time team. And Agent Christopher's goal is now to protect them, protect their mission, protect them from Rittenhouse. So she's keeping tabs on everybody. And poor Connor Mason just kind of wants to establish himself. He's sort of finding himself. He was this brilliant engineer who established this company, who built this kind of technology. And now the person he mentored, Rufus, is able to solve these things, you know, like that. And he's struggling. So Connor Mason has some really great introspective moments, too, where you kind of just get to see where he's at and how he's feeling through all of this. And, um, and Agent Christopher is also trying to do her job. She's trying to do right by these guys. You know, she put her neck out for them and she believes in them and cares for them. So she just wants to help take care of them as much as she can. So um, she might do things that upset people, but she's doing it for their own good. So you kind of can't be mad at her. And um, we don't get more backstory on her in the first four episodes. I can tell you that because I know some of you guys were wondering, but you know, that could be coming up because they've been showcasing different, um, different characters. Like in the second episode, we learn things about Wyatt that we never knew. And it, we learned that he was a, NASCAR aficionado and he has uh, all this knowledge about like uh, old old school hot rod cars and stuff and it's really cool and interesting and we learn about his family and his upbringing and Rufus and Lucy are looking at him like what and he's like well no one ever asked so 
you know, he just kept it to himself. So it's really nice to see him open up and be vulnerable in that way. So we are learning more about uh, different characters and we're getting more and more backstory. And Gia's health issue is addressed. Piece by piece, we see her visions and her little um, side effects, if you will, from joining the love, uh, the overloaded lifeboat. We get to see some of that. And uh, it unfolds really nicely. It, it goes at a good pace, so it builds the suspense of it. You see just little by little what she's seeing, what she's seeing it means. Um, and it's going to play a really interesting part in this season, I think. They, they really set it up to be something that could turn into a really fascinating uh, storyline throughout the season. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing it evolve even more and seeing what her visions will hold because um, when it comes to tra time travel there's a little bit of that whole future past thing you know so uh, it, it sort of reminds me of the movie um, Timeline which I don't know if you guys ever saw it it's from 2000 uh, 2000 2001 and it's um, with Paul Walker and Gerard Butler and I'm rambling now a little bit sorry but um, if you're interested it, it kind of uh, deals with a group of people who travel back in time and they are kind of like Lucy they're um, they're not historians but they're archaeologists so they're savvy about the medieval ages that they travel to and you kind of see a little bit of um, sort of the same dynamics that you see on timeless where some people feel like they belong in an older era and they you know befriend people in older eras and things change in the future in the meantime while they're doing things in the past. So um, so that kind of stuff continues happening on Timeless as well. So um, the time team will return and there'll be changes in history so that they're filling Agent Christopher and Connor Mason and Gia in on stuff that is now fact to them, you know, for their whole lives because they didn't realize history is changing, but Wyatt, Rufus, and Lucy are able to tell them that that's not, that that happened because of us. That's the way it went down. So, um, so yeah, so they um, they shockingly do reveal um, quite a bit. So I didn't, I didn't want to spoil anything for you guys, but I just wanted you guys to get really excited and stoked because it's all phenomenal. It is really, really well done. The writing is impeccable. The balance between the humor and the drama is absolutely perfect because the whole season is going to be high stakes. They are like trying to save the world as we know it. It doesn't get any worse than Rittenhouse than the new big baddie they've brought in to lead them on their mission. And all you have is the time team to work against them. So um, it doesn't get more dramatic and intense that in, than that. And, you know, there everyone has their own personal dramas in the midst of it. You know, people are worrying about Gia's health. There's drama with um, Flynn and if he can be trusted. And then you have the whole Lucy and Wyatt thing going on on the side. So there are a lot of dramatic, and of course everyone's life is on the line because Rittenhouse and the time team are at each other's throats um, with each jump. So that's always the consistent drama that's going on. And then you'll see little individual personal stories where they delve into new characters or the, our main characters and you see the hurdles that, you know, they have to jump over and, and the anguish that they go through and their dilemmas and what they're working um, through themselves. But then there are a lot of really, really funny, hilarious moments. Like in the second episode um, where Rufus meets the very first African-American NASCAR driver and he gives him the nod. And he's just looking at him like, what are you, what, what's this? Like, well, why are you looking at me all funny? Like, why are you doing that? You know, and Lucy's like, what are you doing, Rufus? And Rufus is like, it's the black man nod. You know, it's like, you just nod at each other. So it's like, there are these adjustments still that even after all these time jumps that they made, they, there's still habits that they can't always break when they go back in time, you know? And, um, and you see Lucy persevering as she always does, championing women's rights, especially in the Salem Witch Trials episode, where she stands up for the women who just because they're different, they don't deserve to be hanged, you know, for their wrongdoings. So, um, so it's still a lot of the same, um, same timeless things that you love and they just kick it up a notch. The production values are stellar and the acting will move you and the whole, you know, first 
chunk of the series will just have you on the edge of your seat and you'll just continuously want more. And I really, really hope NBC doesn't mess up again and doesn't even think of canceling it before season three because there is a lot of great stories they can still tell and they've set the stage for something pretty remarkable in the second season and I can only imagine it gets better from here. So um, yeah, sh hit me with your questions on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, you can even email me and uh, you might wanna subscribe to my website, talktvwithtiffany.com and my YouTube channel, which you can find through my website because I'll be posting regular um, articles and video recaps and reviews and stuff like this. So you'll get it in your email inbox if you subscribe. So uh, you'll get it right when it posts. And, um, and I also just really had a lot of fun doing a live stream on Facebook with some of you guys. So I'll try to make that a regular uh, thing and maybe we can turn it into timeless drunk history. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned and uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any more burning questions. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, I really wanted to just review it on video because I'm just so excited and I wanted you guys to see how excited I was and I talk a lot faster than I type. So it would get out to you guys much sooner <laughs> since it's four episodes and um, there's just a lot of goodness. So uh, you guys are gonna be so happy, so, so happy. And I can't wait to watch this with all of you and live tweet with all of you starting this Sunday, March 11th at 10 p.m. on NBC. So until then, happy watching.